Good morning, grace and peace. <sighs> Multiply to you all in Jesus' name. Anita, go my Glenda drunk. Glenda drunk and cold. Queen Dima Doce and the rest of the crew. Welcome to Morning Koinonia. It's going to be very brief this morning, but it's good to have you here. This brief Morning Koinonia. Glory to God. Invite your friends. Tell them we are on. I want to teach you something from 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. If you have it, you can plug it dead. 1 Timothy 1 verse 18. 1 Timothy chapter number 1 verse 18. If you have it, you can plug it there. Put it there. Put it there. If you can put it up there, is what I'm teaching you this morning. Good morning, Praise Nelson. I didn't see you on Sunday. Uh, Sunday was really good. If you missed service, go watch it online. It was a wonderful service. That was a wonderful service. Wonderful service. First Timothy one verse eighteen. Okay, that's a different translation. If you have it in New King James or King James rather, First Timothy one verse eighteen. Let's make our declaration and will teach you something from first Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 it will bless you first Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 and I just want to say to you this morning everything that God has spoken concerning you will come to pass God when God gave you that word he was not trying to hype you neither was he trying to just make you feel good God means what he says and says what he means upholding all things by the word of his power. God says what he means and means what he says, upholding all things by the word of his power. So when God gave you that word, that vision, that dream, Joseph, he was not trying to tantalize you. He was not trying to um, um just make you feel good. No, no, no. It was intentional. He knew exactly what he was saying. He knew exactly what he was saying. He knew exactly what he was saying. So if God has given you a word, I don't want you to go to sleep on the word. I want you to take the word and claim the word. And that's what I want to, want, want to teach us this morning. Um, let's, 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 let's go into this. We'll make our declaration at the end of um, today's service it says in first Timothy chapter 1 verse 18 this charge I commit unto the son Timothy according to the prophecies which went before on thee that thou by them by the prophecy mightest war a good warfare that thou with the prophecy mightest war what a good warfare. What is the Bible saying about that? It's in the, the prophetic words that have been released to you from God. From God. From God. Now that you know you have this word, don't go to sleep on the word of God. Don't go to sleep on the word of God. The Bible is saying, wage war with those words that God has given to you. And there is a reason it is called the good fight or good warfare because it's called the fight of faith. The fight of faith means it's a fixed fight. It means 
it's a fixed fight. It's a fixed fight. You know what that means? That actually also means you already have the victory. The fixed fight means it's a good fight because you're going to win the fight. So when God speaks a word over you, if God has spoken to you, you will carry your baby. That is not the time for you now to start crying about childlessness. Oh, see my life. No, 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 no. That's not how to use that word. How to go with that word is that you start using that prophetic word that God has given to you. It may come to you in the service that nobody hears, but I've said something and you can tell that this thing that has been said is personal to me. What do you do? You keep acknowledging it regardless of the odds against you. With God, the outcome is sure. Regardless of the odds against you, with God, the outcome is sure. So how do you do that? You stay consistent fighting the good fight of faith. And one of the ways to fight the good fight of faith is to consciously and constantly remind yourself of what God has said concerning you. What God has said concerning you. Like I say all the time, you cannot picture, you cannot feature in the future that you have not pictured in the scriptures. Yeah? You need to constantly remind yourself of what God has said concerning you. Constantly remind yourself of what God has said concerning you. So you keep speaking the word of God. With God, the outcome is sure. So, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither is he the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he will make it good. If he said it, he will bring it to pass. So, here's what I want you to do. Deliberately. Is take every word that God has said to you. So, if you say, well, God said this to me. What did you do with what he said? What God says to you is so powerful. But it is even more powerful when you say what he said to you and you say it to yourself. That's how you wage a good warfare. That's what it says there. A good warfare. Not, do you know about a bad fight? No, that fight was just bad. No, he said that fight was good. That means, believers, we don't have bad warfare. We have good warfare. You know why? Because we already have the victory. We already have the victory. Glory to God. We already have the victory. Who's learning something from this? Because I want you to, I want you to pray about this. I want you to keep praying. Um, I want you to know how to pray well. When you come on, you start praying, you know what you're doing. First Timothy 6 verse 12. First Timothy 6 verse 12. Let's go to First Timothy 6 verse 12. First Timothy 6 verse, 4, verse 12. I don't know whose word is this. What God said concerning you has not expired. What God said concerning you has not expired. He will bring it to pass. What you need to do in prayers is keep speaking. You know, people say, remind God of what he said. He does not have amnesia. No. Say, remind God. Instantly, we remind God, God, you have said, no, you remind yourself of what God has said and remind your situation of what God has said. Say, take God's word back to him. Remind him of what he has said. No, he doesn't have memory problem. Remind yourself and your situation that this is what God has said. Fight the good fight of faith Lay hold of eternal life, wherefore thou art also called, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses, and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Lay hold. Remember his promises. Don't remind. He, he knows. He gave you the promise. So God, you said it's going to say, eh, hey, ah, in Jamaica, look, was there any time I promised um, Sandra that I was going to give her uh, money and give her house? 
I said, Daddy, I can't remember. Maybe it's Gabriel that was there. Gabriel, come on. This guy, the blessing one life on my head, though. That's not who God is. Who. God says what he means and means what he says, upholding all things by the word of his power. I just came online to remind somebody this morning that that thing that God said to you is going to come to pass. Okay, maybe don't choose your neighbor. I'm saying it is going... If God has said you will carry your baby and see your grandchildren, I don't care how you are feeling this morning. It is going to come to pass. He's not a man that he should lie. God doesn't have retentive memory problem. No. Listen to me. So, you need to remind yourself and remind your situation about what God has said. It is yourself and your situation. Listen to me. I'm saying this to you. I don't care how you feel this morning listening to me. What God has said concerning you will come to pass. It, hold on a minute. Hebrews 10 verse 23. Three scriptures and then we will we'll, we'll, we'll close on me. Hebrews 10 23. Hebrews chapter 10 Verse 23. Somebody put it up there so I can pin it down. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. It's just my little exhortation for you this morning. We're going back into Bible study soon, but I just want to lay this foundation. Hebrews 10, 23. This will bless you. Hebrews 10, verse 23. Somebody put it there. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let us hold fast to the profession, which is the confession of our faith, without wavering. Why are we holding fast? Thank you. Why do you think we should hold fast to the confession? That's it right there. Let us hold fast to the profession, which is the confession of our faith, without wavering. Why are you holding fast without wavering? For he is faithful that promised. That means the reason... We are confident is not because of our goodness or our righteousness. We are holding fast because of the faithfulness of God. We are standing strong because of the faithfulness of God. We stay believing because not because we are faithful. So your holding fast is not predicated on your Good behavior. Let me hold fast to some of you. Say, Let me hold fast to and make sure I don't make any mistake. Oh, for God, now vex and counsel me. No, 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 no. God is not counseling you, He's counseling you. God is not counseling people, He's, ca he's counseling. Hold fast, meaning hold strong to that profession, hold strong to that word that He has said. Of our faith without wavery for he is faithful that promised I need you to see that he is faithful that promised that means the reason we are holding fast we're not hold the the, the strength of our stand and our hold is not premised on our faithfulness is premised on his faithfulness. So now wrap your hearts tightly around the hope that lives within us, knowing that God always keeps his promise. That is the pity. God always keeps his promise. God always keeps his promise. This is why we've been declaring in church for a while now, the word of God works every time in my life. Why? Because he always keeps his promise. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. You know, one time we were going to church and I was going to pick somebody on my way to church. This was many years ago. And then she said to me, no, no, someone's, someone's going to get me. Uh, oh, wow. Okay, so I drove off. And she said she stayed there for a while. But he didn't show up. She said, oh, well, I would have just followed Pastor Flourish. That's different with God. 
If God tells you I'm going to show up, stay there. You should trust the faithfulness of God. Now when he shows up, he will show up big. God always keeps his promise. So God has his own lockdown. You and your situation needs to be reminded that God is going to keep his promises. You and your situation needs to be reminded constantly that God is going to keep his, keep his promises. God is going to keep his promise. Joseph, right now, I know you are in the pit. And there are some Joseph that have moved from the pit. And you're in Potiphar's house. I know some of you are no longer in Potiphar's house. And now you are in the prison. But God always keeps his promise. God always keeps his promise. When he shows up, he will show up. So what you do is take heed. Focus on the promises of God. And you see mighty performance in your life. I'm just extending Sunday message to you. And it, it stands strong. Stand strong. Stand. You, need, you know, Esau said, one of my members, Esau said, she came to my office exactly one week ago. They've been living God for a child. I mean, close to five years. But if you see this child now, if you see this baby, you will now know that, ah, this was worth waiting for. Because when God shows up, When God shows up, that's what I wanted to share with you this morning. I want you to stay strong. I'm talking to somebody who has given up on what God has said. And that's why God brought me here to remind you this morning. That particular thing that God has said concerning you, that you know, is going to come to pass. The problem is, are you ready for it? It is going to come to pass. Because God always keeps his promise. So what do you do? The first verse I read is wage war. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 18. Wage war with the prophecy that you have been given. Wage war with the prophecy that you have been given. Wage war. So what do you do? Every time in prayers, you remind yourself and your situation about what God has said. You're not trying to remind God. Let's remind God of his promises. Let's remind him. Let's remind him. Father, we bring you to remembrance today. He doesn't have memory loss or amnesia. No. No. It's not God you're reminding you. Know? You're reminding yourself. And you're reminding this situation. Most times when we think we're reminding God, we're actually reminding the situation. So don't remind God about his promise. Remind yourself about his promises. Because God always keeps his promise. I woke up this morning to encourage you and even encourage myself to easy lies the head that wears the crown the bills are daunting to lead the church we do it so easily that it looks like he's having fun but the bills are daunting but I am reminded that God always keeps his promise can we say it again one two three go God always keeps his promise one more time god always keeps his promise let me say this to you as i close if you don't wage war with that word that god has given you you are likely to sabotage what god has said not because it won't come to pass but because you are not ready for it you wouldn't even see it when it's happening but i want you to know that god always keeps his promise. God always keeps his promise. 
always keeps his promise. Always keeps his promise. God always keeps his promise. Always keeps his promise. Always keeps his promise. You, you, should, go, you, you should be able to go to sleep on that. That if God mistakenly says it, it will mistakenly happen. God always keeps his promise. And it is with that in mind that we come to God in prayers and in, with intercession that I'm going to sleep now. God always keeps his promise. God always keeps his promise. That you come into intercession. In intercession, you're not reminding God of what he has said. You are reminding yourself and the situation of what God has said. Say, Lord, I bring you to remembrance. Your word said, no shall be barren. Oh, God, remember your word. No. He doesn't have amnesia. Remind your womb and remind yourself that God has said, I will carry my baby. So fallopian tube, hormones, everything aligned to what God has said because the word of God works all the time in my life. That's how you prayed. Come into rest, brethren. God always keeps his promise. That's how you work it. The rent, the bills, I'm reminded that people like me, I prosper. I am in good health. Even as my soul prospers in all ways and in everything that concerns me, I decree and declare, I increase. Here is my declaration. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Business, hear ye the word of the Lord. Lift up your head. That is how you wage war in the spirit. You wage war with what God has said to you. That's what God has said to you. So once the Lord says it, he has given you permission to say it. Once he says it to you, that is your authorization and your permission to start saying it. That's how you wage war in the spirit. So sometimes your prayer is to remove unbelief out of your heart and your mind and receive this precious word of God. That is able to change your life. I want you to know. Keep saying it. You see it happen in your life. That's how to pray. That's how to fight the good fight of faith. That's how to wage war in the spirit. That's exactly how to do it. Keep doing it. You see the miraculous workings of God in every area of your life. In Jesus' name. Rehearse it. It won't be long now. God's decree. Things are going to happen so fast. My head will swim. One thing fast on the heels of the other. I won't be able to keep up. Everything will be happening at once. And everywhere I look, blessings, blessings, blessings. Pouring up like wine. In the name of Jesus. Stand strong. Stand strong. Stand strong. Stand strong. Stand strong. Bible says you shall not see wind. You shall not see rain. Yet the valley will be full of water. The problem is you keep looking at the wind and the rain. Leave the wind and leave the rain. Peter, look on Jesus. Don't see wind. Don't see rain. You still get the same result. Stand strong. Stand strong. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Glory to God. 
Yeah, we uh, I'm a prayer as you go and they will make our declaration. Prayer as you go. Prayer as you go is declaration 47, page 126. Declaration 47, page 126. Were you blessed this morning? Did you learn something? Did you learn something? Did you learn something this morning? I hope this blessed you this morning. This blessed you this morning. Let me say this. Morning Kononia should not take your time of prayer. I believe you should have spent time praying before morning Kononia. I'm praying after morning Kononia. If you pray before morning Kononia, you're most likely to have a confirmation of what God said to you, of what popped in your spirit whilst we are praying right here. And whilst we are teaching right here, I'm telling you. Because believers now just shout amen, amen in the morning. It is important that people start having consistent prayer time. Pray up. Pray up. Pray up. Please pray up. Pray up. Please pray up. This shouldn't replace your, dev your personal devotion. These secrets of Eve, I will block you. This shouldn't be replace your personal devotion. This shouldn't be victory. Oh God, I'm telling you, shake it from my mind. This shouldn't replace your money devotion. This should, your money, you know, you know, you know, believers these days don't even understand what money devotion is. Money devotion. We don't understand it. Just wake up and go. No. Something called money devotion. These shouldn't pray up in the morning. Spend time. This will be confirmation. This is a this this is really powerful. We teach the word of God. We read God's word. You hear God's the word of God's grace in the morning, which is really powerful. Yeah, but it's important that you cultivate your prayer life. Okay, I'm done, guys. Um, page one twenty six, the declaration forty seven. Oh my God. 1 Corinthians 2, verse 16b, but we have the mind of Christ. Glory to God. Dear child of God, you have the mind of Christ. You can only operate with a sound mind when you feed your mind with the word of God's grace. You are as mentally healthy as the word of God you have committed to memory. Did you see that? That's powerful. My mental health, my mental health, my mental health. This is what is affecting your mental health. You are only as mentally healthy as the word of God you have committed to memory. Did you see that? You are only as mentally healthy as the word of God you have committed to memory. Mental health generation. What is disturbing your mental health is that you are not committed to word to memory. You cannot be mentally healthy if all you consume is uninspiring or toxic. You are what you eat, feed on the word of God, and you see yourself operating with the mind of Christ. You are what you eat, so therefore, feed on the word of God, and you will see yourself operating with the mind of Christ. Today, I declare by your life that you are that God is good to you, and His mercy endures forever. First Corinthians two sixteen b, sixteen b. I acknowledge that Christ is in you. Christ in you is divine wisdom. I decree Christ in you is divine knowledge. I'm praying over you now. Christ in you is divine intelligence. Christ in you is divine counsel. I declare that you have the mind of Christ in all that you do. I think you think like Christ, therefore your mind is no longer receptive to negative thoughts. I decree that you think like Christ, therefore your mind is no longer receptive to negative thoughts. You think like Christ, so therefore your mind is, thank you, there's a word for somebody. Decree my mind is no longer receptive for negative thoughts. Have you met people who are just negative? They see problem in every solution and then they drag it. Decree my mind is receptive. My, my mind is no longer receptive to negative thought. Say it, my mind is no longer receptive to negative thoughts. 
my mind is no longer receptive to negative thought. Decree his spirit instruct me in the ninth season. His spirit instructs me in the ninth season. It again. His spirit instruct me in the ninth season. I'm not a confused person. I know what to do. Today I declare that my mind is no longer a playground for evil thoughts and demonic activities. You need to pray that prayer. My mind is no longer a playground for evil thoughts and demonic activities. You want to pray that prayer quickly. I enjoy divine direction. I cannot be deceived because I receive divine promptings and alerts in my spirit. Complex and confusing situations are easy for me to unravel and handle because the wisdom of Christ is at work in me. I declare that I have a sound mind. My mind is illuminated by the Spirit of God. I decree that your mind is illuminated by the Spirit of God. Therefore, you see as God sees. You know what to say and how to respond to everyone regardless of the situation because you have the wisdom of God in you. In Jesus' matchless name, decree you have the mind of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Glory to God in the highest. I just want to put up this declaration this morning. Let's make our declaration as we close at the count of three. One, two, three, go. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am the redeemed of the Lord. All my sins are forgiven. I am passionately loved by God. I am powerfully helped by God. I am kept and protected by God. I enjoy angelic assistance. I am irrevocably blessed. I am eternally forgiven. I am the healed of the Lord. I enjoy divine health. I have the favor and the wisdom of God. I am fruitful. I flourish, excel, and prosper in all that I do. Nothing is against me. Nothing dies in my hands. I am never stranded. All things are working together for my good. God loves me more than the devil hates me. And grace is working for me. Glory to God. Declaration 46. Declaration 46. No, Declaration 47. You're right. Declaration 47. Page 126 was our declaration this morning. I will see you tomorrow morning by God's grace. Invite your friends to join in. Brief exhortation, brief, brief Bible study, brief prayer of encouragement, prophetic words being released. I think it's just a complete package we have here every morning. Have a flourishing day ahead of you with great grace. Miracles are waiting for you in the board meeting. And in every meeting you have, the miracles just waiting for you. Go get ready. Go get it. Go get it. Go grab it. Go grab it. God has given you the land. Put your foot on it. I love you. Blessings. <laughs>